And so he had me send him my lyrics and he just stopped asking for them after the first few songs because he, he couldn't figure out what they were about and I couldn't really either. A lot of it was a hell of a challenge because uh, some people don't realize uh, the, uh, the, the scale of some of these instruments like the Olympic pipes. They don't realize that they can't play an F sharp minor. They can't play in B flat, which is what we- We found that, we found that out. out. <laughs> very integrated life that I have and because of that that's just my normal some people might think that is absolutely nuts and totally crazy for me that's normal like I don't know how else to live my life I don't think I can separate work from art I don't think I can separate my work life from my personal life In my teen years, I really got attracted to heavy metal and also Celtic artists such as Enya, Lorena McKennett, and then even just legendary singer-songwriters like Sarah McLachlan and Tori Amos. A mixture of all these different influences have made me who I am now and I can't, you know, I've tried writing other styles of music and it just doesn't happen, it just doesn't work. So all I can write is what is coming out of me now. I play the piano and keyboards and, you know, virtual instruments. Uh, I have played a little guitar in the past and uh, I'm also just learning to play the Celtic harp as well since, uh, yeah, it's like my dream instrument. So I have a harp and I just need to practice more. Creative process is pretty straightforward. I'm usually, I think my, some of my best material comes when I'm not trying to write a song. When I'm just sitting down and noodling around, playing with sounds, playing with melodies, and then I usually stumble onto something by accident. It's usually a complete accident. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I like that. And I'll just work with that for a little while and see if I can make like a verse out of it or maybe a chorus out of it. And usually, um, it's all about the melody at first. So I'm not writing the lyrics. I never start with a title in mind. It's all about the chords and the melody and can I make something catchy out of it where, where if I stop, I usually know it's good if it's stuck in my head and I can't sleep after that. That's a good sign that it's a good song because I, I literally, it will not turn off. It's playing over and over and over again. Can't stop that, you know, that riff from playing over again, so causes me insomnia. And as far as lyrics, I usually, I write in an intuitive way and I didn't even realize that this was a thing. I didn't even know until I think Devin Townsend mentioned that it was called intuitive lyrics writing when, and I'm sure he didn't come up with the term either. I think someone else did, but it's where basically you're just like, you know, sounding out words and it's really just gibberish, you know, but you're, you're singing a melody and it's all gibberish and you have no idea what the words are gonna be, but you kind of record it, right? And then out of the gibberish, you kind of just see like, what are the words that naturally seem to fit there? And then if I like them, I'll find words to kind of fill in the gaps, fill in the, the holes, and then I'll see if I can get them to rhyme. I'll see, is there actually a theme going on here? And so that's why a lot of my songs, I feel like they wrote themselves. I didn't come in going, I'm gonna write a song about X, Y, and Z. I really didn't know what the song was about.
when Oliver works with female vocalists, which he does a lot, he will usually have a singer send him lyrics so that he has a, you know, a more of a connection to the song and the meaning behind it. And so he had me send him my lyrics and he just stopped asking for them after the first few songs because he, he couldn't figure out what they were about and I couldn't really either. Because I was like, I don't really know. I just, that's what came out. That's what the song is about. It, you know, it could mean this, it could mean that. And so sometimes there's symbolism in there. Sometimes there's a little bit of a storyline that I've created, but a lot of it is just intuitive lyrics. Like the song wrote itself. And so I don't know exactly what it means. It's just, it's part of the song. So um, maybe, maybe it's a Canadian thing. If Devin writes that way and I write that way, I don't know, maybe it's in the water it's in or the syrup, <laughs> the maple syrup. We have the problem here that the singer is in Canada. I am in Germany. Then we have like Sander, Berend and Timo in Holland. And then we have Troy in Scotland or England. I don't even know. Chen in Spain. And that makes it kind of demanding logistically. So with having guest musicians from across the world, it's fairly easy, it's straightforward, especially when all the songs are really, we do. We spend a lot of time on the pre-production. And so we kind of know, for this album anyways, where all the pieces should fit and how they need to fit together. And within that framework, there's some flexibility when you just give it to the artist and say, a musician and say, you know, have at her, do your thing, but kind of within these parameters. I specifically cho choose musicians who I know are that talented that I literally could leave it in their hands and say nothing and I'll get something amazing back. First of all, I make an entire arrangement for everything. And I have to make sure that everything still matches with everything when it gets back. So uh, sometimes a bit like guarding flea circus, but it's but it's dual and it worked fine. In particular here worked fine because we had like a really great cast of musicians. I mean, that, that definitely helps a lot. It was really easy because she's, she was very um, open and she just went, you know what you're doing, just do what you do, you know? So it was, there was never any, um, oh, there was never any, any conflict or any finicky nonsense or any of that kind of thing. Yeah. She was very lovely about everything. Just went, yeah, just well, whatever you want to do, just do it, you know, I had, I had frameworks and I had blueprints and all that kind of thing and um, I just adapted my instruments. I do believe that today uh, working in a long distance is not such a hassle. I mean probably in previous times it was a bit of a hassle since there was no net, there was no emails and you get a response like a month later. <laughs> But today it was pretty approachable, like Facebook or email. Everyone is responding pretty fast, and the way to record stuff is quite easy, easier than before. So luckily, the long distance challenge was not such of a challenge. Although I still believe in the, the old school way of having two people in the same room and sharing those ideas in a live moment, because that creates a real synergy. But I really believe that we overcome that in the Azaba. I got the demos and I rehearsed them at home. Then I uh, had to go to my uh, uh, live room, which is not at home yet. Yeah, and then I, I, I play the songs and I did two or three takes for each song. Uh, send them to Oliver, uh, I got uh, feedback and uh, repair something and yeah, and uh, every now and then, uh, uh, step by step, we, we, we get a song done. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was really great uh, to work with them again. Actually, the easiest part for me was the recording itself. Like, I first got Leo's ideas of the songs and uh, I knew what she wanted for sure. So I took those ones, first I took them down and laid them in the tracks. And then uh, it comes to my turn, like where I should put my parts. And I always, when I get approached by an artist, I have like a bunch of ideas that comes from my world and my approach to music. So I, I pretty much thought that it would work on her music and she doesn't know that yet. And luckily it ended up in the final mix and uh, I'm super proud of the, all of the ideas that's in there, I think really adds an atmosphere to her songs and uh, like mostly when you record those instruments it was uh, in a technical matter it's quite easy you gotta say like 
only has one good mic, a condenser, in a very dry room, that's all you need to get a precise sound for those kind of instruments, and then you just open them up with certain effects, however you want to to emphasize their kind of uh, their kind of sound. If you want to emphasize it with a reverb, like sounding from a cave, or like a very intimate kind of approach to have that instrument right in front of you playing. So recording those parts are usually the, the most easy part for me. The hardest part is to figure out which part is the, the right one for the song. Um, yeah, I have like all kinds of post-it notes everywhere. Everything's like dusty, messy. Um, this is like my Chaotica eyeball that I use. It's kind of like a tiny little mini isolation booth. And I, this is my favorite microphone I've recorded the last couple of albums with. It's the Neumann TLM-103, I believe. And I'm not like a gear nerd by any stretch of the imagination, like at all. It's I'm pretty not. nerdy that you know the model number. Well, that's the one I bought. <laughs> I, you know, it's not like a cheap microphone, so I should know the model number. Um, but anyways, I recorded like my latest album on this thing, this little setup here. Normally I actually sing in that really hideous vocal booth. It's absolutely the most hideous vocal booth you've ever seen in your entire life. You should go right in there. And, um, but it, it did the job, you know, like I didn't have a nice isolation booth and I wanted to, I, I was recording everything at home. So we just found a bunch of old curtains in a bin in the garage and hung them up there. And that became my isolation booth. This is just Bravo. like actually gear that I've rented because, uh, yeah, so just what do we have there? A compressor, just a basic mixing board. And I don't even know. Whatever it does, it makes it all work. I Like I said, I don't really know anything about gear. Mm -hmm. I just know how to turn it on, and sometimes I can't even figure out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded the bass at my home studio, actually, uh, as well as the guitars. Uh, it's really cool. I'll tell you a little bit about the process. Oliver kind of made a sketch, and I uh, played... A lot of stuff I played kind of the same way as he wrote it, but a little... Uh, you know, a lot of focus on the tightness and the tone and, and, and whatnot. Um, so I recorded all the guitars at home uh, with my setup. Uh, I used an Aristides 080S 8-string guitar uh, into my Rev Generator 120 amp, which is Canadian. So it's a Canadian amp on a Canadian record. And uh, I'm using it in a two notes torpedo studio, which is a cabinet simulator. So there's no loud stuff. It was all recorded directly. And um, so I use the DI track, which is the dry guitar. So the mixing engineer can reamp it and you know choose whatever guitar sound he wants. But um, Jacob Hansen, which is the mixer for this for this record, amazing like high profile mixer. It's, he does great stuff. He decided to keep my guitar sound, which is amazing, you know, it's really cool. I recorded at home and he used it. I didn't want to do a very polished metal sounding album mix here. So what I did was I, I treated everything like a like a huge fat rock band. That was my vision anyway, um, because I thought that this was something very unique, really. It's um, it's like this blend between folk and, and metal and, and really interesting harmonies, interesting arrangements, interesting vocal things and sounds and everything was really... I won't say that it, that it was new to me, but this, you know, this, this very way of, of, of blending all these things together was, was actually new to me in, in a certain way. I think that um, I've, I've done a bunch of mixes where it's been really dense, lots of orchestrations and, and stuff like that. But this was a, a different thing because this is um, this is more folkish and and it's not like a mix between orchestra and really really heavy and and how do you say uh, kind of tight music. This was more like lush in some way. A lot of it was a hell of a challenge because. Uh, some people don't realize uh, the, uh, the the scale of some of these instruments, like the Olympipes, 
they don't realise that they can't play in F sharp minor, they can't play in B flat, which is what we we found that out. out. <laughs> so that was a nightmare, but um, but it was a challenge. So it was it was a nice thing for me to do something really unusual, uh, playing outside of the key, of the key of the instruments that are that are um, um, known for. Uh, it was was exhilarating. You know, it was really really nice. When I was recording it, I, I felt I felt like yeah, this is something really unusual. Yeah. See them outside of their usual comfort zone, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do anything like that before? Like working long distance with um, somebody? Yeah, else? yeah, I have. I have. Um, but never as wildly off as Leah's stuff. Mm -hmm. um, usually, you know, you, you'll get something in G minor or, you know, D minor. You can get away with that pretty easy on the Ellen Pipes. But when you're looking at E flat major and, and bizarre stuff like that, whatever, whatever the hell she was up to, <laughs> then then it's it's different. It's difficult. But as I say, it was it was a good challenge and uh, it kept me on my toes. You know, it was good. I definitely live a life that I would call integrated, where I don't have a bunch of compartmentalized bits of life where it's like okay this is my music life this is my work life this is my family life i am a mother first and foremost i have five kids i'm an entrepreneur run a business all of my life is very much intermingled in one which makes it a bit messy and also a lot of fun and never really boring i'm never really bored ever in my daily life that that could look like you know me working on you know coaching other musicians in the same day that maybe I'm recording a short vocal for something and then you know I'm seeing my kids um, they do their schoolwork in the morning and they're homeschooled so my kids are at home my husband works from home I'm at home and so you know I'm working I'm creating we're living I'm seeing my kids it's all happening at home every single day. So there's not one day where all these things aren't happening. They're happening all the time. So it's a very integrated life that I have. And because of that, that's just my normal. Some people might think that is absolutely nuts and totally crazy. For me, that's normal. Like, I don't know how else to live my life. I don't think I can separate work from art. I don't think I can separate my work life from my personal life. It just is all one life. It, and and I prefer to keep it integrated, I, I like it. My, some of my best material comes in the midst of complete chaos. Like when I'm supposed to be doing, you know, in meetings and doing other things, you know, and running a business and other stuff, that's when music is an escape for me. And I'm just like, I need to write something right now. And, and, it, and it just happens and then it's great. For me, because my life is not, you know, it's not a fantasy world. So for me, actually writing the music is an escape. It's kind of a release of tension. And, you know, so that's where I tend to go to the fantasy world and Celtic stuff and get inspired by history. And this last year for me, I spent some time playing video games, which is not really normal for me, although I, I like Video, video games. I just haven't. I just don't have a lot of time to play them. Uh, but as I was getting some inspiration for this album, I was playing a lot of Elder Scroll games, specifically Skyrim. And I only found out about it because my fans told me they I should play it. There, and I asked them like, "What games do you guys like? You know, what game do you think I would like?" And they all said, "Skyrim. You have to play Skyrim." So I did. And yeah, they were right. I totally loved it. My kids love it. I play with them. What do you want me to do? Play Skyrim. Play Skyrim? Yeah. I got really inspired by like the scenery and the landscapes and you know, the, the whole world. And I think it was definitely what inspired the song on this album called The Quest. The song itself represents a journey and it represents like ups and downs, good times and bad times. And ultimately at the very end of it, there is a prize, there's a reward, there's something you're looking to that is driving you to, you know, all the hard work, everything you've been working so hard for, everything you've been focused on is all gonna be worth it for something. And I feel like, you know, the songs on this album kind of take you on that same journey, but ultimately, I mean, that song for me really does it.
one song that would stand out is Quest, but not because I think it is necessarily better than the other songs, uh, but just because it was the biggest challenge. That probably was one of the biggest challenges that landed on my table in the last 10 years. And in the beginning, I, I, it felt like a, a mountain too big to climb. So I'm kind of uh, very happy with the way it turned out. This, this was a hell. Oh, this is a, I really think it took me a, a month or so to finish that arrangement. It was uh, crazy. And I remember that, that halfway into it, it was everything was a total mess. Uh, I thought it was going absolutely nowhere. And, but this happens so often. If you just follow your intuition, you keep going. You feel that you should do this, but you don't know why. You have to go anyway. And at some point, it's like a miracle. Like the sky clears up, and all of a sudden, things fall into place. And from there, it just uh, the pieces start to fit together. And with this song, it, it took long because it was a, a very long song, apparently. And then still, when it was done, I had like a tiny bit of doubts if, if that would be mixable, if we didn't overdo it. In particular, when we also put like all these vocals on top. Like the, already the instrumental arrangement was kind of relatively rich. And uh, we didn't hold back on the vocals. And there I just have to give like my compliments to Jacob. I think uh, mixing this song, uh, he, he delivered a masterpiece. And here's a song that was a bit of a challenge. It's um, a song called The Quest. And this one was uh, kind of crazy. It's a 10 minute long song that goes up and down and it's, you know, comes through the most crazy things. Um, the, the track count of this particular song is, uh, well, in my mix, in my session, it's it's 131 tracks, which is pretty crazy, and um, that means it's this was a challenging song, but but uh, it's it was really interesting to to mix this, really cool, lots of cool things going on. One of my favorite songs is Quest. I really love that song. It's um, epic. Let's crawl to the song and uh, every now and then I will show you the drums only and yeah, uh, let's have some fun. Our solo of my dear friend Timo is <laughs> he's, uh, he's great. My favorite song of the album probably is Quest. It's a 10 minute song. It's quite long, obviously, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't feel like a 10 minute song. Like when I listen to the song, it feels like five minutes. It's like so much happens, so much. It's, it's almost like a few songs in one, but it never gets boring or far fetched, you know? It's not like you're listening to it and it's like, oh yeah, you want to do like a proggy part again, you know, it's 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 one big composition and it works and it keeps your attention and it has like um pretty crazy guitar solo in the middle and has some cool cool stuff. So it's it's my favorite song. It's like the most adventurous one and it has like all the uh like the best melodies, the best rhythms, possibly the weirdest guitar solo. So it has all the cool things in one song. So that's that's great. So now we go to the last part of the song. It's the epic part, but yeah, maybe it's fun to start halfway here because it's very long, <laughs> but it's awesome.
you know, I've never done it before where I've named uh, an album after a song. And so this is a first for me. Also, the artwork on this album is different. Normally, it's always my face on the front. And I really wanted to focus more on the mood and the vibe and, uh, and the atmosphere of the album in general and the concept in general, which is this fantasy world that takes you somewhere else. So I didn't want to be so much the focal point. I wanted the music to be more the focal point. And I'm just a songwriter, you know, the songs are just coming out and I'm the facilitator of these songs being written. And so I wanted to, the focus to be on the visual aspect of, of the music and the journey of listening to it and also what the songs represent, which is everybody has this journey that they're on. And what is that prize at the end? What are they working so hard toward? What is the goal that is keeping them focused and keeping them on the right path and so i feel like that is what this album represents on her uh, previous albums you've had her uh, photograph on the album cover for obvious reasons so when uh, when you're less known and you want to get your uh, name out there and you want to get your face recognized by the fans uh, it's not a bad idea to use a photograph and she had always really cool photos to choose from so no problem there but on the other new album, we decided to do something completely different. You know, on this album, we don't have her on the, the album cover. And the reason is that, you know, this way, uh, your main focus on the cover is not uh, distracted by the photograph, but actually it, it is almost like a painting. And uh, on this cover, we have a path that leads to you to the castles and through the mountains and uh, to the album, if you like, to the music. So, in this way, it is a fantasy uh, world you're stepping into. And I totally like the idea, because now it's something different again. And uh, maybe it lets you, the music, uh, speak more, uh, in, a, in a way. You know how there's certain albums in life that you listen to at a certain age, and they're like imprinted into your life? Like when you hear that album after years and years that have gone by, it takes you right back to that time in your life because it made such an impression and it just imprinted on you. I hope that this is that kind of album for people that it will imprint on them in their life and that it will be uplifting, that it will bring them joy, that it will somehow make this world a better place because it's dark out there. It's a dark world and I feel like Music is one of the things that can make it better. It can take people through hard times. It can lift them up. It can really, on a physical, scientific level, can give you a, a hormonal boost of serotonin by listening to your favorite music. I hope this music lifts people up. That's ultimately what I want to do with this. There's a few songs that I remember. I don't even remember what they were, but I remember as a kid listening to a song and I actually got this sensation of euphoria from a song that just resonated with me. And I hope that this album will resonate with people like that, that they will actually experience something like that, if it's possible. I like when the music takes me somewhere else than my own surrounding. So that's just pretty much my effect when listening to her music. And I'm very proud to be a part of it. This album was not easy, but it is worth it. Like it really turned out well, I think, I hope. I hope people love it. Real music played by real people uh, with a passion, all those things, all the elements that are lost in this world of bland rap and Katy Perry and all that nonsense, you know. I, you know, I like something with a bit of soul, a bit of movement, so it was, it was great, it was great. I was all, always into epic music and something sounds like a soundtrack, like came out just out of the movie and it was very easy for me to get into it. It's a new sort of sound in, in this whole uh, female-fronted thing, you know. She she really knows the Celtic stuff, you know. It's very true to her. She doesn't, like, uh, fake it, you know. It's like, she, she, she really knows that stuff. And she does it amazingly. And uh, great musicians on the album. It's honest and it's soulful. Uh, it's big, it's romantic, it's all the things that the world needs. You should listen to the album for sure. If you like uh, Celtic music, if you like uh, Delaney, Nightwish, With Intentation, 
that kind of music, if you like pop rock uh, music, yeah, listen to this album for sure. It's um, everything comes together there, and you absolutely would love it. Check out Leah's album. <laughs> just check it out. Just, no, don't even check it out. Just buy it. <laughs> <laughs>